Yo, what's up squads? Welcome back to Regal Randy's Ranch. First off, I just want to say thanks for all the love we've been getting. Make sure to stick around until the end of the video to find out who won the giveaway and how to join the next one. Big shout out to Spider Farmer for sponsoring this video. They hooked us up with one of their newer grow lights and we're going to unbox it and set it up in our 2x8 grow area where we've been growing some clones from the outdoor run last year. As you know, we had to take down the evil grim plant we had growing outdoor in the 20x20 due to a leafhopper infestation. It was honestly heart-wrenching having to take down a 6 foot tall plant halfway through flower, but it was heavily damaged and the citral glues were towering over it. So I cut it out in order to give the other plants more room to grow. And since earlier in the year I had taken some clones from it, and everyone was really interested in seeing this particular strain, I decided to run them indoors. Because I only had one seed of this strain, it was really lucky I took the three clones during veg. My friend really liked how this strain was growing and was devastated when we took it down, so I did give him one of the clones. That left me with two evil grim clones and I could fit one more in this 2x8, so I threw in one of the citral glues to fill the space and to see how it grows indoor as well. The citral glues stretch really hard while the evil grims bush out, so this is going to be interesting growing a sativa and indica in the same area. We might have to do some finagling, but it should work out. Alright, so today I woke up and checked my mail and boom, there lies a beautiful box. What could be inside, I wonder? Mystery abounds. Now a more perceptive individual might have noticed the shipping label from Spider Farmer, but not this guy. I prefer the trial by fire method, so I carry it inside and take it to the grow room to unbox. Now, if you guys follow my socials, you know that I buy way too much stuff. So having Spider Farmer give me this light to test out is a nice change of pace. They sent me one of their newer models, the Spider Farmer G4500. Spider Farmer is a well-known brand in the world of indoor gardening and offers some of the best LED grow lights available. And the first thing I see when I unbox this is some cool Halloween themed stickers. Oh shit. That's nice. And it looks like this model utilizes the bar style LEDs similar to the SE7000 that I have. If you guys don't already know, I really enjoy this new style as the old models with fixed drivers and large LED faces trap heat at the top of the grow area. The bar style allows for better airflow, heat dispersion, and they're much lighter so if you're growing in a tent that can be really helpful when you have a bunch of stuff hanging. The G4500 is super light, 11 pounds lighter than the SE7000 weighing in at 15 pounds which equals 6.9 kilograms for all my global viewers. After picking this thing up though I honestly think it's lighter but I could just be delusional so I'll have to weigh it on a scale later. Oh, actually, one reason it might be lighter is that I don't mount my drivers to my lights. They throw unnecessary heat, so I just hang them or mount them outside of the grow space. It also allows me to adjust the light without having to open the tent or grow area, and high temperatures can cause the electrolyte gel inside the driver's capacitors to dry out, which drastically shortens the life of the lights. And I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but for those of you wondering what a driver is, basically it's what LEDs utilize instead of a ballast to convert the alternating current into direct current to power the LEDs. On old school metal halide lights, they used ballasts, and while the light on metal halide lights is very high quality, they have a much shorter lifespan and have really long warm up periods. LEDs tend to last much longer, are much more energy efficient, and are a less maintenance intensive technology. So that's why you see most indoor growers using LEDs now. There's a ton more info about what type of lights to use and why, but these are just the basics. If you guys want a more in-depth video on how the lights work and electricity, just write light video in the comments and I'll make one that's really in-depth about what type of lights to use and the pros and cons of each. As you can see, the bars just snap into place and the wires are plug and play, so assembling this light is really easy. Now, I'm gonna bring it into the 2x8 and replace the SF1000s that the Evil Grims have been under with this. It should give us a much higher par rating as the G4500 is a 430 watt light, compared to the two SF1000s we've had them under, which are only 100 watts each. Before I install the new light and show you guys how much the plants have grown, I'm going to take a step back to the beginning when I clone them. The first rule of cloning is always take more than you need. Sometimes certain ones won't root fast enough and it's always nice to have more to choose from. When deciding which clones to use and grow out fully, I always pick the fastest growing ones because that usually means they were stressed the least. 
In this case, I took a ton of clones because the citral glues had so much foliage, it seemed like a waste. So I took a bunch and ended up giving a ton away. For this video, I'm not gonna go super in depth on how to clone, but if you guys wanna know how to clone like a pro, check out one of my tutorial videos on the subject. It's a lot easier to cover everything in tutorials as there's usually too much information to fit in a harvest video. Since I was taking so many clones, I just used a clone box with Rockwell cubes. It's not my favorite cloning method, but it's simple, cheap, and easy. I always use a rooting gel or powder as it speeds up the time it takes for the clones to root. Once they had rooted, I transferred them to solo cups and threw them in a 4x4 tent so I could keep a good environment using a humidifier. A quick little side note, this is not the 4x4 they're going in. I had taken down a run and planned on cleaning this tent, so I just used it as a workspace to clone. That's why I watered them with no regard for the runoff, since I was dismantling and cleaning this tent anyways. The clones were hungry for a medium to grow in, so as soon as we transplanted them, they took off. This is what they looked like after about a week. During this time, I was also growing some elder lemon berries, and I like the strain so much I took some clones from the plants and flower, so that's why I'm rearranging these. The reason why I have such fast growth is the environment I keep them in. Ideally, you want a 0.8 to 1.1 VPD level for the vegetative state of cannabis. VPD stands for Vapor Pressure Deficit. VPD helps you identify the correct range of temperature and humidity to aim for in your grow space. When you dial in your VPD, you can achieve the best results while avoiding pest and environmental problems. VPD also controls plant transpiration rates, stomata opening, CO2 uptake, nutrient uptake, and plant stress. If you master VPD, you'll become a better grower. An easy way to measure your temps, humidity levels, and VPD is by using a sensor push. A sensor push is a water-resistant smart sensor that measures your temperature, humidity, dew point, and VPD. There are also online charts that can help you determine your VPD, but it does require you to know your temp and humidity levels, so I really recommend getting a sensor push, since you can set alerts and have it send notifications to your phone if your environment ever gets out of control. These clones have continued growing at a rapid pace and it's almost time to transplant. I didn't top them or LST them yet, but I'll cover how I mix my soil, the transplant process, some low stress training techniques to maximize yield, and the installation of the new light in the grow area in part two of this grow series. Now I know you guys have been patiently waiting and it's finally time to announce the winner of the giveaway for the Blue Lab PH pen. Congratulations, Brianna Harding. You won. Just hit me up on Twitter with your info and I'll send you the PH pen. I hope it makes growing a bit easier. For the next giveaway, I'll be giving away a 3-in-1 soil moisture and light meter. To join the giveaway, make sure you're following me on all my socials and comment what you liked or disliked about the video. As always, thanks for stopping by. Peace out, squaws.